Hey everyone, I'm Marina from Pineapple Yarn and I'm here to share with you what I have been working on this week. It actually has been two weeks since the last time I recorded. Last week was just, it was a little crazy, my internet wasn't working, it was just, I feel like I have more internet outages than anywhere I've ever lived, which is just crazy. But. <laughs> That's all right. It's back on. I've had some trouble this week as well. Hopefully it stays on because I have a shop update tonight and I still need to upload everything. So fingers crossed it will all work. It'll work when I upload this video. I, I think we'll be good. I think we'll be good from here on out. So hopefully. But yeah, so I have been so busy with all of my crafting. You know, there's there's times where in a week I feel like I haven't made a lot of progress on things and um, I'm definitely one of those people I like to, s I'm constantly crafting, I'm constantly making and then it's sometimes I don't see a lot of results at the end of a week but if I wait two weeks I feel like there's just so much more. It's, it's really interesting the way that works. But I have a near finished object I'm very excited to share with you. It is my no frill sweater. It's a pattern by Petite Knit. And there it is. I think it looks so great. I'm so excited about this sweater. I absolutely love the colors. I love how it came out. I love the fit. It just, it really could not be any better. I love this so much. And I know I had said that I will probably just wait until the spring to wear this. That's kind of, um, it's what I had intended on this because it's more spring colors, but I might be wearing this in the fall. I'm not kidding. I'm so excited about this. I mean, plus by the time it's actually cool enough to wear a sweater, we're talking December, <laughs> realistically. So um, anyway, I'm very, I'm just, I, I love this so much. So like I said, this is a pattern by Petite Knit called the No Frill Sweater. It's a very simple top-down raglan sweater. I knit it with the exact same needles called for in the pattern. I used a DK weight, and these two are both my yarns. Um, they are on my Lani DK base, and this natural color here is just what I call natural. It's an undyed yarn. And then this lavender color is called Cloud Nine. It is such a good lavender. It is so beautiful. It's, I, I can't tell you how much I love it. So I'm just incredibly thrilled with this sweater. Now, the reason I'm not wearing it, besides the fact that it is summer here <laughs> is because I don't have any of the ends woven in so that's something that I need to go back this week I have in the plans to go back and weave in all the ends I do have a lot of ends in the body because after every 15 rows I would um, I would switch colors and I would just have I would just leave my ends so sometimes I'm really good about um, about weaving in ends as I go, but I wasn't this time. So I have lots of ends to weave in, but it, it won't be bad. I really don't mind weaving in ends. So it is all good and I'll get that done. But yeah, I really, really love how this turned out. Um, the fit is exactly what I wanted. I wanted it to end at my high hip. And so it really does, it's kind of like, I would say it's in between my natural waistline and my hip, so it's really flattering. It ends at a really flattering place. And then, um, you know, did a one by one rib at the bottom. The cuffs also have a one by one rib. And I, it just so happened that I only had to do maybe two rows of this next stripe before I went into the cuff. And so I was really lucky the way that the striping worked out and the length of the sleeves because I was wondering, okay, how, how long <laughs> am I going to have to knit this sleeve, you know, and maybe the cuff will fall in between stripes. I just wasn't sure really where the sleeve length was going to land as far as like the striping pattern. So I feel like I, I really lucked out on that. I did knit the, um, I think it's the size one the first size, I don't really remember what the sizing is, but I knit the 
um, the first size and uh, it fits great. There is definitely uh, a good amount of ease, but that's what I wanted. It's just a really, really comfortable sweater. It's, it's just so nice. And um, I also used, I was able to get away with using two skeins of each color. So I was kind of cutting it close with this natural color, just because I did the cuffs in that color, I did the neckline in that color, and so I was using more of that just because I began with that color and also ended with that color on both the the cuffs, the bottom hem, everything. And um, But I, I was able to use that. So I would say maybe in the first two sizes you might be able to get away with um, to four skeins of, of your yarn. No promises though, because mine's pretty short and I'm a petite person. And so it's just a short length. And so I guess if you're doing a cropped length or a shorter length, um, you'll be good. Otherwise you will have to get more skeins. So just a heads up in case you're interested in knitting this pattern, but I'm so excited. I'm, I love that now I know just a really good go-to pattern for a simple sweater. I'm really, I love petite knit patterns. They're just so simple and they're easy to follow. For me, I feel like they're so easy to follow and um, straightforward. So that was the sweater pattern and I'm very excited to have that done. And then next up are my fingerless mitts I have been working on. And I think I shared these with you maybe the last episode I recorded. And since then, I have knit two of them. <laughs> these are knit using my hand spun. Uh, I believe this is from Classy Squid Fiber Co and the color jelly bean and it's a south down what i did is i chain plied this so it kind of turns self-striping so so pretty and i departed a bit from the pattern just because of the weight of my yarn my yarn ended up being a thinner yarn than the options provided in the pattern and i can't remember i'm assuming this is a size three only because I would have used an interchangeable needle with it. I think I went, I, I'll have to go back and look at my notes and I will leave some notes um, down below, but I, I don't remember what I used, but I am following the um, first option in the pattern. And so these ended up turning out, I, they fit my hands, but I'd kind of had my children in mind for these. So it's perfect. They fit really, really well. And I just um, knit them up as the colors went. So as you can tell, I have this green left and um, you can tell the other colors in there. And luckily for both mitts, actually, I was able to come back, knit the thumb, and the thumb ended up being about the same color. This one's a little bit darker. This one ended up being the exact same color. So yeah, I just think they're so fun, even though they don't match. They're so cute, and my kids want these so badly. So my plan for these, these were so fun to knit. They really were. They are perfect for hand spun. There are several different sizing options in the pattern, so definitely go check it out. I will link it below. And um, anyway, my plan for this is just to knit some more with this cake. Um, I don't have any more of this colorway. I don't have any more of the fiber. And so really it's just kind of a lone skein of yarn <laughs> sitting in my stash. This was um, spun up several years ago. I, I do believe it was one of my first, it may have been my first chain ply. It definitely was on the beginning of my spinning journey, if you will. So um, these, this fingerless, fingerless mitts pattern is just a perfect way to use it up. And I would say um, this varies between maybe a fingering weight to a sport weight, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very even, but as you can tell, I mean, it's, it really looks nice all knit up. So 
So it's not perfect, but it it definitely is just it's just fine for my kids and maybe I'll even you know, maybe I'll pack them up and give it to them for Christmas or something like that. So I'm I'm thinking they'll probably forget about them come December. <laughs> So yeah, I was excited to just, you know, just kind of pick them up here and there and work on them. And um, fingerless mitts are great because they're very simple. You have a little bit of interest with the thumb gusset, but a pattern like this is just so fast. It's much faster than a sock. You get to the point on these where you just don't really think about it. You don't have to, they're, they're kind of instant gratification. So if you do like knitting socks, I would definitely knit a pair of fingerless mitts because they're a lot faster than socks and they're just as fun. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I was excited to finish those up. They're not finished all the way. I still have ends to weave in, but I literally just finished the thumb last night to uh, be able to show you today because it's it didn't take that long so that is it for knitting that is basically all i've been working on i still need to add last month's mini mystery club to my crochet granny stripe blanket so i need to do that so i can share it with you here in the next couple of weeks but other than that, that's, that's really all the knitting plans that I have right now. Um, I do, I, I basically have promised my children I will knit them all sweaters this year. So I'm kind of thinking of knitting maybe some baby gifts, um, maybe some child size sweaters, just something that will not be so hot sitting on my lap, <laughs> but also something that, you know, things that I want to get done anyway. And then um, I do want to share with you, speaking of hand spun yarn, I do have a couple different months of my fiber club, which is a, it's a monthly club, um, either via subscription or one-time purchase. And um, the past couple months I have spun up some of the fiber. So this one is the first skein I want to share with you. It's so pretty. I just, I really love the colors in here. It always is surprising to me what color dominates in this and definitely that those deep purple tones dominate in this. So It'll be interesting to knit this up and see what happens. But this was from April 2022, uh, the Pineapple Yarn Fiber Club. And it is a BFL. It's so soft. I love BFL. Every time I spin BFL, I always, I always forget how great it is. But it's such a great fiber. Um, like I said, I chain plied this. And it ended up being... Um, because this was just kind of a sample for myself, it, it was 88 grams and it's about 120 yards and the finished wraps per inch are about 10 to 11 wraps per inch. So this is just a very versatile weight. Um, I think that I will probably use this in a worsted weight pattern. I'm thinking since it is 88 grams, I definitely could get um, a hat out of this. You know what would be really great? I bet I could use my fingerless knit, my fingerless mitts pattern that I just talked about. I could use that pattern and do a gauge swatch, see how this one measures up, and then knit some awesome fingerless mitts out of this because it is a really, really pretty yarn. I love how it came out. And the BFL just has this bit of luster in it. So it is just incredible incredibly soft and we've got you know there's periwinkle tones in here and kind of soft blush pink greens purples really really pretty you you get a little bit of earth tones in there too just where a couple of the colors bleed together so pretty so I was really happy with this um, I spun this up on my electric eel wheel which is my wheel of choice these days. It's all I use when I spin and I have not spun in quite a while. This, this I spun up maybe two months ago, but didn't want to share it with you until 
everyone got their packages. So, um, so yeah, this was so fun and I love chain plying. I love the self striping that you get with a chain ply. So this is a good reminder for me to do more of that. <laughs> Definitely. Especially when you have a pattern like the fingerless mitts where it's, um, it's so perfect for a self striping. It's so beautiful and really highlights that yarn. You can't get that in a commercially dyed yarn or even like a small batch. It's just not the same. So anyway, the next yarn is a little sample I spun up from the May Fiber Club. This is a, a fiber that I have not worked with before and it's called Lonk. And here is how it turned out. I really wanted it to be just like this gorgeous, fiery red. And this sample doesn't have a lot of yellow in it, but the fibers that I sent out had yellow. It has a little bit of like a plum. Oh, I love this color so much. I think it just turned out so pretty. So uh, this is 32 grams and there are 71 yards in it. I did a, um, I did something different than I had done before. I really wanted to spin this up on my Spin Illusion Polywog, which is that little tiny spinning wheel <laughs> that I shared with you um, several episodes now at this point. And so I did, I spun this entire sample up on the Polywog. I did a two ply fractal and I'm pretty sure I did it. I, I don't have it on my card. So I'm assuming that I did a short backward draft or a, um, a continuous back draft. I'm pretty sure that's what I used. And I wrote a note here, so easy to spin. So um, Lonk is a great fiber to spin. The problem that I had spinning this is that the polywog is not at least for me it is not the wheel I am going to gravitate towards when I go to spin a project my kids love it they use it all the time so I was so happy to use it for a smaller project um, like I said this was 32 grams so it's not that big but just I'm I've been spinning for a little bit now and I like to go faster and it is, I don't have the accelerated ratios on the polywog so the ratios are just low. It's a slow wheel. It's great if you're doing maybe more bulky yarns or if you're a beginner but it just wasn't what I wanted and it really wasn't my preference I guess. Um, nothing to say anything bad about the wheel. It's just not the wheel I'm going to use on a daily basis at by any means, but um, I'm happy with the way this came out. Now, as far as what I'm going to make, I'm not really sure. I, there are some really, really deep tones in this, like almost black, very deep, and I love them. I think they're beautiful. So what I'm thinking is, again, I could make an accessory and just maybe pair a commercially spun yarn in like a really dark, like black color. It'd be striking, it'd be beautiful. Or maybe um, put a mustard yellow, like a yellow ochre type color with this. Again, it would just be beautiful in the fall because this red is just this, it's an orangey red, it's so beautiful lots of warm tones in this and then you've got um, a, some plum to um, offset all the warm tones. Very, very pretty. So that was a little sample of the May Fiber Club. And those are two spinning projects that are finished. Now as far as spinning, like I said, I haven't been doing a lot of spinning. Um, mainly because I started spinning the silk fiber that I have in my stash and it has not been very motivating. <laughs> I don't like silk. Um, I think it's a beautiful fiber, but I love elasticity and spring and texture and I don't 
re- I'm not looking for the smoothness and that drape of the silk. I, it's just not what I really love to spin. But I've been trying to spin some of my Hedgehog Fiber Clubs that had silk content. I, When I was subscribed, I would just separate all the silk out and just not even spin it and only spin things that didn't have silk in it, which is ridiculous because now I have a lot of silk that <laughs> I need to spin. And so I was during, doing a true worsted style spin. I was trying to spin thin thin for me anyway. I normally do like a DK or worsted uh, weight yarn. And so this is thinner than that. And I'm really trying to do like a true worsted style spin. So it really brought brings out the um, luster and the drape of the silk. I just, I got done with one bobbin and I'm just not feeling doing the second. And it might be one of those things where I just need to get that done, spin it up before it gets real hot and then um, reward myself by doing another project. I might have to do that. Also, Tour de Fleece is coming up in one week, so in July, on July 1st. So that might also be another project that would be good just to challenge myself during then. I don't have any plans on spinning with a team or anything, but just to challenge myself, I might do that. So thinking out loud here, I'm just thinking out loud. So my final project I want to share with you is something pretty exciting. I finished all of my dish towels off my loom. I'm so excited. This was a learning process and it ended up being really fun. So as um, for those of you who've been watching the last several, several episodes, I just purchased a Glamokra Amelia. It's a 19 inch rigid heddle loom and I was having some problems, to be honest. I was having some problems getting this loom warped and getting the tension right and everything, but you know what? All in all, it ended up working out pretty well. Um, they're not perfect by any means. Um, I didn't have, you know, just perfection weaving them. And yes, someday I still want a floor loom. This is going to be kind of a stopgap until then. I love, love how they turned out though. So I ended up cutting these at 26 inches, or we, sorry, weaving these at 26 inches and then doing a double folded hem and I just stitched them on my machine. I know people have strong feelings about, about machine sewn hand woven dish towels. Um, I'm kind of here for the function. I use my dish towels all the time and I don't have a problem with it. I just don't. So this one, I did a really pretty purple weft. And then of course the warp you can see is just this bold, um, navy blue and kind of i can't remember if this was i'll, I'll put the, all the colors down below um i know it was like navy blue and a natural or a white and then maybe a periwinkle but one thing i had forgotten is how um, warp dominant these are because you're doubling up the warp so it really doesn't matter what weft color you do, to be honest, it just really doesn't. You are going to get this pattern. So in every single one, um, I tried different colors. So you can probably see this one. I did some different colors. I did like this beautiful warm caramel. There's some aqua at the bottom. Um, I did the same kind of periwinkle that's in the stripes. I did a lavender, did a pink. And you can tell, I mean, you can see that there are some different color variations, but as you can tell, it just doesn't really matter. It just doesn't matter, really. Um, some combinations might be more pleasing than others, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what color of weft you have. So I think going forward, when I'm doing these, um, doing like a double thickness warp, I think what I'm going to do is just use whatever weft color I want. <laughs> I'm just going to 
uh, weave with whatever color I want, whatever color I have the most of. So that's what I'm going to do. The other thing that I really had a challenge with on these is the outside of the warp. So like the outer edges were so crazy. The tension was awful. And you can really tell in a lot of these, um, these projects. So I'll show you, hopefully you can see, you can just see it's very uneven, especially when you're using a contrasting weft with your warp, you can really see those mistakes and really see those errors. So, you know, that was kind of, it is what it is. Um, there wasn't a whole lot I can do about that. I thought this one was kind of neat because I used a really pretty kind of chartreuse color in here, made it really bright. And then this one is just some fuchsia and some deeper purple. So that was kind of pretty. I have two that are really good that I will probably give as gifts. Um, this one I wove with this pale lavender color and then this one I wove with, I thought this was a dark purple, but you know, the more I look at it, it might be, no, it is a deep purple. So these two, and you can't even, you might be able to tell a slight difference. This one might be a little bit darker, but you really can't tell a difference. So on my next towels, and I have planned up other towels, I've, I've already picked out the cones, picked out the colors, I've like drawn out, like drawn out the um, color placements. I have it all planned out, and I am going to use less natural color in my dish towels. I really want to pack it full of saturated, beautiful colors. And the next project that I do is going to be all warm tones. So as you might have noticed here the past couple of episodes, I have arranged all of my 8-2 cotton. And so this is mostly warm colors. This is mostly cool colors. I'd kind of pictured with the, the cool colors to do like some really beautiful kind of ocean inspired tones. So like I have some lighter colors up here you can't see on the screen, but some aquas and turquoise and put some of these less saturated tones in there and some gray. I think it would be so beautiful. Maybe even some like some of these kind of like beigey tones. I think that would be so pretty and do like an ocean theme. But before I do that, I really want to weave up some super warm tones. So kind of like what I'm wearing, these kind of colors, um, they're all missing <laughs> from my warm tones here, but I have some really pretty kind of nutmeg and um, terracotta, like those kinds of tones. And I have a little bit of natural, but what I'm going to do is kind of the opposite of these. And I'm going to really pack in all those warm colors. So they're just going to be a tiny, tiny stripe of natural in between each color, which I think is going to look really cool. And it's going to be labor intensive to get that warp all together because um, I direct warp my loom and I just have to, I have to walk back and forth between the, in the room. And um, it takes several hours to warp up the loom, even on a rigid heddle loom for me when I'm doing dish towels because, um, yeah, because I always do a complicated warp, <laughs> a complicated warp pattern. It's fine. But anyway, that's that's just me rambling. That is my next project I have planned, and I'm really excited. I liked how these turned out. They're not my favorite colors, but I have two that came out awesome to gift. And I should say, by doing these um, 26 inches long, I ended up with four. Nope, I ended up with five dish towels. I kept one in my kitchen in the house because I wanted to use it. <laughs> so I ended up with four uh, or five dish towels. I would say two of them are great. Two of them are awesome. 
and then the others I kind of I did make mistakes here and there but I really was playing with weft color and to see if there are any color combinations that really blew me away which there weren't so um, so that's fine and then I had some left over and so I made this little kind of dish towel or um, you could use it for a wash rag or a washcloth something like that but I have so many mistakes on this and it just reminded me that there is a reason why there is waste at the beginning and the end of your weaving because I'll show you the back here you may be able to see all of the parts that um, of the warp that I skipped so if you see all these kind of dashes though that's where my yarn was getting really kind of funky near the end and yeah I was just skipping a lot of um, of the warp and so it's definitely not perfect but I, I knew that I could make something for myself for my own use that would be so functional because I'll tell you there is nothing like these dish towels they are so absorbent and so soft they are incredibly useful uh, I made some, I think the last time I wove some were a year ago, and I use them all the time. They're the first ones anyone reaches for in the kitchen, whoever's doing dishes, whoever's cleaning, everyone reaches for these first because they are amazing. So um, I haven't warped up for the next ones. Maybe I'll film it and take you along and just kind of show you how to do it. It's not very difficult. It's not really any different than any other rigid heddle um, project, but it's a, it's and it is tricky because with the cotton yarn, there is no give. Like with wool yarn, it doesn't stretch. the t The tension of the warp is much less forgiving, so it it is difficult. But hopefully, this next warp I can. Um, I've resolved the issues. I think I know what I did wrong <laughs> to get the tension better on the edges and Hopefully this project will go a little more smoothly Well, that is it for projects this week for me I do want to remind you that I have a shop update tonight Which is Friday June 24th at 8 p.m. Eastern time at pineappleyarn.com I am going to have some knitting kits, which are project bags, um, matching or coordinating skeins of yarn, as well as a progress keeper that are created by my super talented daughter. <laughs> so definitely check those out. They're so cute and summery. I will have my, another, the last redye of my Seabreeze mini skein gradient sets. So those are perfect if you want to cast on the solstice wrap that actually uses last year's advent calendar. So you can kind of recreate that, get the same look if you like. And I will also have tonals and colorways. So lots of things in the shop. This was a huge update. It's been so much work, but um, super satisfying to be able to stock the shop with some beautiful things. I know the shop has looked empty lately, so it has been a lot of work, but also very gratifying to get all those things in the shop. And yeah, so that is it for me. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like this episode, I'd love if you'd give it a thumbs up. I hope you've had so much cra so much crafting time, so much time for your making, and I hope to see you next week. But until then, I hope you have an awesome day. Bye.